I bet 10. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this first alert weather day. Take a look at this map of road conditions tonight. If roads haven't been shut down, they're under a no travel advisory across the entire state of North Dakota. That's minus this little area of purple between Devil's Lake and Minot. That's all scattered snow drifts. I-94 closed from the Montana border to Jamestown. Conditions are only expected to get worse for the most part. Minnesota travel map. They're looking a little better. We're seeing some light snow and ice out on the roads near Fergus Falls, but down in southern Minnesota, visibility is essentially non-existent. If you're at home right now, it's a good idea to stay put. If you chose to fly for the holiday, the headache continues. It's a race to the gates at airports across the country right now with Mother Nature in hot pursuit. More than 2,000 flights were canceled by this afternoon and more than 1,000 slated for tomorrow have already been canceled. Millions of travelers are scrambling, battling what some weather experts are calling a once in a generation kind of winter storm. Well, I was originally supposed to fly tonight and then obviously with the weather, I thought that's not going to happen. So I have this insane itinerary now. I'm going to like Vail and then I'm going to Houston and then I'm going to San Antonio and every time I would check flights they would like go up in price a lot. So it's been a little nerve wracking. So I'm just hoping that I got here early enough that I can get out. That woman is not the only one trying to navigate her way through O'Hare in Chicago. Our sports director Devin Fry landed there earlier this evening. He barely made it out of Fargo before flights were canceled. He we'd plan to hear from him tonight, but he's been at the ticket counter for hours trying to figure out when he'll be able to leave, saying our guess is as good as his. Let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson now with the latest on the storm. Hutch. All right, Stacy, thanks so much and good evening, everyone. And I I think I'll put it this way. I hope you're where you want to be and your loved ones are as well now as we head into Friday, because even here in the valley, things look pretty decent now, but they will be deteriorating as we go through the overnight into the morning. First alert weather days were issued for this string of days last week, and here we go. Let's go ahead and get to what you need to know tonight. We definitely have wind chill concerns and Certainly it is frigid out there with wind chills that can set in in less than five minutes in some areas. So cover up, dress in layers. That means all exposed skin that you can possibly cover up and make sure in your uh, car you have a survival kit that has stuff should you become stranded by roadside that can help keep you and your loved ones warm. And that may include if the engine dies, right? You might want candles and matches to light those candles. Just don't burn too much inside your car there without rolling the windows down. Blizzard conditions Thursday through Friday, and we're going to talk about some nasty conditions that continue into Saturday as well. That's Christmas Eve. Oh, and a clipper swings through on Christmas Day. Clear skies for us, but the wind blowing this lofty snow all over the place out west, and that's heading our way. Snow showers now from the mitten of Michigan through Cincinnati and right down in the Nashville, Tennessee. Oh man, and I'll got to tell you, we got snow in the northeast, but look at the heavy rain pushing through that will be converting to snow tonight. More on that in a minute. Blizzard warning for us. Western Minnesota all the way through the Dakotas, southern Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin. Winter storm warnings off to the east of that. Wind chill, another concern. Here in the valley and points west, wind chills will hit 50 to 60 below for some, particularly out west. Where you see the blue, that's a wind chill advisory. Wind chills 35 to 45 below. Check these out already. 41 below an exposed skin in Fergus Falls and near 50 below out in Dickinson. Last night, southeast North Dakota saw some 60s below out in that uh, Hedinger area. So all in all, it looks very cold, brutal travel conditions. We'll have details on what you can expect as that wind that is strongest out to the west with gusts to 45 and 50 miles per hour heading our way by morning. Details in your hour by hour forecast. Stacy here in a moment. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. And if you haven't already, download the VNL Weather app. It's vital for keeping up with these ever changing conditions. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL Weather in your app store today. Around the holidays, we all try to be more kind from giving gifts, thanks, even a helping hand. Valley News Team's Kellen Harmon shows us how one couple's helping hand came in at a time of need and from a complete stranger. It was a special day for Jess Sell as she headed out for some shopping after being cooped up from the winter storms. But her special day took a turn when she got a call from her husband. He's like, um, hey, I think you need to get outside. And I was like, why? Um, and he's like, because I think your car's on fire. I was like, you think my what now? 
Cell returned to the side of her vehicle up in flames, where she then tried to direct others away in fear that it may explode. When all of a sudden, this man pulls up in an SUV. I'm like, sir, you need to move your car. And he's like, nope, I'm here to help you. And I'm like, oh, are you with the fire department? He's like, no. A complete stranger stopped to divert traffic and give winter clothes to Cell, who hadn't even realized she was only in a hoodie and dress pants in the freezing temps. She's blocking traffic, just in her coat and holding a bag. No gloves on. Talking, I gave her a vest, gave her some gloves just like this. She had tears on her face because it was cold out and they're froze to her face. At that moment, like <laughs> my tears were like frozen to my face. So I had no idea like how cold I really was. Jeremy Hansen says he acted to ensure safety, something he says was instilled in him from his years in law enforcement at UPS. I feel that it's my way in a way to give back. You know, people are like, well, why would you do that? I'm like, well, because I, I wanted to help that person. But for both of them, what they ensured is a belief that you can always stop to help someone, even a stranger, especially during the holidays. People shouldn't be afraid to help other people. That's how we build a community. That's how we build relationships. By you just doing that good deed, you don't know where it may take you. You know, you could end up becoming really good friends with that person and you never know, especially during the holidays. We all need that right now. In Fargo, Kellen Harmon, Valley News Live. What a story. Cell so says that she was floored by the help she received from strangers, including the staff of nearby stores who ran out with fire extinguishers to help her. New for you tonight at 10 as NDSU gets ready to make budget cuts. Some good news right before the holiday break for the equestrian team. In a message to the team, the coach says the decision to get rid of her position has been reversed, meaning she'll stay at the university and classes and the team will continue. She attributed the decision to outreach from people on the team supporting her. We now know what exactly was said during the 911 call from the man who's charged with killing an 18 year old in McHenry last summer. The transcript from Shannon Brandt's emergency call on September 18th shows his efforts to get first responders to the scene where Kaylor Ellingson was laying in the street with injuries that would eventually kill him. Brandt gives an explanation on what happened and is facing a murder charge and a charge of duty in an accident involving injury, pleading not guilty to both. He told dispatch he could give first aid to Ellingson, but was told to wait for first responders. We've posted the full transcript for you. Just click on this story on our website, valleynewslive.com. Poor communication, lack of staffing and mental health are the top concerns voiced in the 90 interviews done with both sworn officers and civilian staff at the Fargo Police Department. The city is calling these stay interviews done in an effort to fix problems within the department before it's too late. And in a lot of instances, we weren't necessarily learning about someone's interest in leaving until they were turning in a two week notice. Chief Sabolski says more mental health programs are already being implemented in 2023. City officials add efforts for better and more competitive pay will continue. The Fargo VA needs your help this holiday season with its giving tree. This picture was posted on social media just three days before Christmas, showing this tree still full of gifts that veterans are asking for this holiday season. The poster says the tree has basic items like new towels for veterans. They're also asking for winter coats and overall sizes large and extra large. If you want to help out and spread holiday cheer to vets in need, you can find this tree at the Fargo VA hospital lobby. New at 10, a worker found something special inside a Salvation Army red kettle in Valley City. Someone donated a family wedding ring that had been a keepsake for decades. Thanks to this and other donors, workers believe they'll reach their goal of $50,000, adding the winter storms have hampered their efforts, but not their spirits this year. Take a look at this. Sanford and Fargo got ready for the holiday season by putting their newborns in stockings. These Christmas babies are quickly celebrating their very first holiday and those involved today say they had just as much fun. We are lucky enough to be able to be a part of people's biggest events in their life. And so just we get just as excited as the family to be able to, you know, provide some Christmas stockings and put babies in them and just get everybody excited for the holiday. We we get every bit as excited as the families do. Tonight, longtime anchor Mike Morkin ended a 43 year run in North Dakota television, but it's not the last time that you'll see his face on our channel. We've put together a going away special for him. And if you'd like to see it, you can tune in on Christmas Eve. It'll air at 6 o'clock on KVLY 10 at KXJB. You can also check it out on our website.